And good evening, everybody, and thanks for joining us for this special edition of News 5 at 630, an extended and exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the governor of Colorado, Jared Polis. And again, I want to thank everybody for sending in their questions for the governor. We're going to get to that a little bit later. First, let me introduce the governor. Thanks so much for taking time, Mr. Polis. Uh, we've got some late news from the State Health Department. The Colorado Unified Command Group issued purchase orders for more than $46 million worth of medical supplies. Talk about where those might go, what it would be used for, and a potential timeline. So we've been working on a number of items. One is what you often hear referred to as PPE. That means personal protection equipment. Very simply, we're buying masks, uh, gloves, hospital gowns. Uh, once the needs are met in the hospitals, the goal is to be able to distribute those for other frontline workers, meaning folks in grocery stores, other critical areas where they have to go to work and need that extra protection. But first, we need to meet the needs of the healthcare workers to prevent them from contracting this deadly virus. The other piece of what we're doing is we're building beds and hospital capacity. I was just at the Denver Convention Center today. Uh, we plan to build up to 2,000 beds there if needed. The first phase is 600 beds. These are for folks that are stepped down, meaning they no longer need to be in a hospital bed, but they're not ready to go home. They need to be monitored. They need, often need oxygen. Uh, they would go there to free up that hospital bed for somebody else whose life it might save. We also got some breaking news. I understand that you've been in uh, contact with Vice President Pence today about the situation at the JBS meatpacking plant in Weld County. At least two confirmed deaths there. Possible rush order of co coronavirus testing this weekend. Can you comment on that at all? Apparently hundreds of others are affected by this. Yes, before they're able to return to work, uh, every employee will be tested. Uh, that'll occur over Easter Sunday. We're working through the weekend, Colorado National Guard. Uh, we're working with the vice president uh, to make sure we have the tests we need. Uh, that's about three to 5,000 people. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to be back up and going by next Wednesday or so, uh, but people have to be cleared and not having the virus to return. We already have about 14 hospitalizations. Very likely two or 300 people will, will test positive would be my guess based on 14 hospitalizations, given that it's usually about 5%, sometimes as high as 10. Uh, I wanted to talk about the state health department on Thursday reporting that it looks like the peak may be pushed back to the middle of May. You have extended the executive order till April 26th. That's great news for the health care workers to ramp up what they need if that is, in fact, the peak time. Square those two dates and what may or may not change. Well, uh, the peak uh, would have occurred quicker and been much higher if we weren't doing a good job staying at home. So that's why this is so important for everybody to stay at home except when absolutely necessary. And when you do go out, uh, wear, wear, wear a mask. Uh, here's, here's mine, and when we walk our dog around the neighborhood once a day, uh, that's exactly what we do. And of course, when you go to the grocery store. Uh, by doing that, we are pushing back that peak and reducing the level of intensity as we, uh, the virus will be with us for many months to come until there's a vaccine or cure. Uh, but in the meantime, we have to make sure that we have the ability to give people a fighting chance with it. I mean, without access to hospitals, if we're overwhelmed, a lot more folks are going to die and there'll be a much greater disruption to our economy. So we really have to make sure we have that capacity to help people save their lives and have a fighting chance. And let's talk about the reality of this uh, period of grief that we're in. We are seeing the numbers rise every day. The latest numbers today. Over 6,500 cases, 1,300 hospitalizations, now 250 deaths. Um, we are not hearing, however, about recoveries. Now, the last time we heard from the state health department, they were saying they still do not really have the, uh, the calculation to try and tell us who or how many are being released from hospitals. What about posting that information on recoveries on a daily basis? When might we see that? I, I'm more optimistic than I was. We had to start threatening the hospitals to give it to us because we really need to report it. Uh, they're just so busy with dealing with folks that, that they weren't uh, reporting what we needed. But we want to get figures on race uh, of people that have coronavirus. We also want to get figures on when people are discharged from the hospital, recovered. Uh, I expect those will be up early next week. Uh, I'm optimistic that we'll be getting that from the hospitals. Obviously, as soon as we have it, uh, it'll be public. And quickly before we go to this first break, just 
talk about testing, 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 testing. That's all we're hearing now. Obviously, we're seeing improved information about cases, but what about tests coming into Colorado? Where are they coming from quickly? Uh, all over. We were purchasing uh, tests from South Korea. Uh, there's some that are made in Colorado, the Abbott test you might have heard about, uh, the ones we're getting from the federal government. So there's not a single source. Uh, we pulled in a lot of private sector leaders to work on the acquisition change, folks that had great careers uh, in purchasing in other areas. They're volunteering full time for the state now, helping make sure that well as we're as prepared as we can be on mass, on testing, on all the supplies we need to beat this challenge. I want to thank everybody for sending in their questions online at KOAA.com, our Facebook, Facebook page as well. As you might imagine, Governor, a lot of people have a lot of questions. We tried to pare them down for you. Uh, first of all, and there is some new information today, I believe, uh, this one person writes, I own a small business that's been forced to shut down. I'm self-employed, having a difficult time applying for the Paycheck Relief Fund as self-employed as I don't have payroll. Are there applications to apply for self-employment now? Yeah, I hope so. Um, and we've been working with the federal delegation. I had a call with them this morning to work on expanding those definitions, if possible, through guidance, uh, if necessary, through additional uh, laws that they're looking at passing. They're looking at the next round uh, federally, Republicans, Democrats, bipartisan. Uh, but I'm hopeful that we'll be able to make sure that folks that are self-employed can, uh, by the way, he'll uh, get the $1,200 per person, $2,400 for a couple, $500 per kid. That that doesn't depend on, on your employment. Uh, I think what he's related to talking about is what we call the Paycheck Protection Program. And we're advocating with the Small Business Administration to broaden that. Uh, another question from Cindy. Once the curve flattens, what determination is made by you and others that folks can return to work or school? What will be the reentry? What will that look like? How to protect against a resurgence of the virus? So that will all be laid out before uh, everybody gets back to work, and it's not going to be. It's not going to be the same as things were in January and February. There's not going to be stadiums full of 60,000 people. There's probably not going to be jam-packed bars and nightclubs anytime soon. Uh, but what will happen is people, people will be able to earn a living, be able to get a haircut, uh, those elective surgeries and dental cleanings that people have put off. Uh, looking into May, they'll be able to do those and have them. It just won't be exactly the way it's done before. There's still going to be social distancing that's a necessary part of making sure that we don't have another peak of this virus that costs uh, hundreds or thousands of lives. Another question from Jay. Are you going to request or provide hazard pay bonuses to the brave first responders, fire, AMR, healthcare frontline workers? Have you thought about that? I heard Governor Cuomo talk about that this morning for New York City, a 9-11 type fund. What uh, thoughts do you have about that? I would certainly encourage their employers to do that. Uh, keep in mind that the, the, these are mostly employed by other entities. We're not the state. Uh, hospitals employed by cities in the case of police and fire. Uh, I, I think we should do everything we can for those that are putting themselves at risk. And that means from our side, we're get, we want to get people the best protection possible to, uh, and acquire that in our global supply chains and make sure people have that, prioritize people who are exposed for testing. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm hopeful that many employers are doing the right thing and extending not just normal overtime, but where they can additional support for those who are putting themselves at risk. Now, one of the uh, questions we asked today about these DORA regulations as it relates to uh, the real estate industry, there's some confusion about where it stands right now for the ability of people to buy a home, sell a home, look at a home. Please explain to our viewers where we stand right now as far as that is concerned. So there was some additional guidance today because we had heard from some, some folks that uh, they were told they couldn't do transactions, even though they could. We made it clear, of course, there's been actually thousands of Colorado homes bought and sold uh, while we've staying at home. And we're just doing it new and different ways, meaning we have virtual notary. We enable people to do virtual notary. Uh, the in-closings don't always have to be in person. They're still allowed to be in person. That's a critical piece of business. But of course, there's not those open house things. You know, there's not lots of people gathering and viewing houses. You have to do that online. You view it virtually. Inspectors can still go in. So thousands of Colorado homes are being bought and sold. And that's just people who are leaving the state, people who are moving the state, or people that are moving within the state. All those transactions are considered critical. And, uh, and they're continuing to close during this period before the state fully reopens. 
Here's a very popular question, and you've heard it many times. Why aren't our public businesses requiring everyone to comply with the safe distance recommendations? What good are orders to wear masks, keep a distance? If nobody is made to comply, the ones not complying are making our efforts mute. Or move well, I really hope me. people are complying with it, uh, and I, I, I'm optimistic that we are. People need to make that individual decision for your family members, your aunts, your uncles, uh, for yourself that I need to stay at home, except when absolutely necessary to go out, because I'm not just putting myself at risk. I'm prolonging this economic pain that everybody's feeling. If people aren't staying at home, uh, then we won't be able to return to normal economic activity as soon. It'll cost lives, and, and that life could even be your own. So I'm confident Coloradans are doing the right thing. Stay at home unless absolutely necessary, and wear a mask. Uh, this is mine. Uh, if you do absolutely need to go out, anything that covers your your mouth and your face will work. An old T-shirt even works because it's the main way it protects you is it prevents you from touching your eyes and mouth after you potentially touch a contaminated surface. But none of that is a substitute for staying at home except when absolutely necessary. There's no question, the more Coloradans do that, the quicker we can get everything going back to closer to normal. We sure appreciate those viewer questions. Finally, I want to ask you about the Easter weekend coming up. Today is Good Friday. You spoke earlier this week and a message, an analogy of what those people of faith are uh, celebrating this weekend, the uh, crucifixion of Christ, the resurrection on Sunday, and how that can serve as inspiration as we try to move forward and see the light at the end of the tunnel here. Give me your thoughts on that. Well, first, a happy Easter to everybody. Uh, and it's a time when many of us are celebrating our holiday traditions, uh, Easter, Passover, spring equinox, whatever you're celebrating, or even if you're not celebrating anything at all, that we're celebrating them in new and innovative ways. And we've been working closely with the faith community. I've had several calls in the last week. Uh, our faith community elevates the sanctity of life and is taking the steps necessary to protect the lives uh, uh, of, of their members while also allowing for a spiritual fellowship. And many of them are doing that through online and broadcasting services right into your home. Others are doing it with drive-in services where people remain in their car. But I think it's important that we have that sense of fellowship and belonging uh, that we derive from our faith traditions all year long, but especially during a crisis and especially on Easter weekend. And so I want to applaud the work of our innovative faith leaders, our priests, uh, our rabbis, and so ministers and so many others for really stepping up and meeting the pastoral and spiritual needs of their, of their congregants. And finally, this is a real test of leadership for folks in government, in business, education, obviously health care. Talk about your crisis management team, how you've been able to come together in such quick fashion to be able to balance so many different critical issues on a daily, frankly, and hourly basis. The state has a core emergency response team. It's who responded in the flood of 2013, our fires. Uh, but what we did is we built in a bunch of folks who are talented CEOs, executives, private sector, willing to put everything on hold, come volunteer full time. Uh, folks like Sarah Thunberg, a former startup CEO, uh, many others who have re-entered are doing this full time, working supply chains, managing the emergency response, making sure the state can be a real partner, not just with our county health departments and our health care providers, but we want to lead the way in Colorado in the recovery. Uh, we convene an economic council, a bipartisan group of business leaders and workers representatives that has already activated many recommendations to reduce the severity and the duration of this economic pain so we can get folks back to be able to support themselves sooner rather than later in a safe way. Governor Jared Polis, stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, stay connected. Love your online connections with uh, all the folks here in Colorado. Have a happy Easter to you and your family, and thank you for your leadership. We appreciate you taking time out of a busy schedule to join us here tonight on News 5. Happy Easter. Thank you, Governor.